right, so we're going to talk about Google Jamboard today. And first things first, I should show you how to get to it. So you're going to go to your drive, click New, and mine shows up under the More menu along with all this other stuff. It is here where you see Google Jamboard. If you click it, it's going to open a new one for you. And it just looks like this, this plain blank document. And there's a couple options for you here, right? So here's where you can change the title, the zoom, undo, redo. The background, this is kind of neat. So you can change it to dots, lines like line paper, a grid, right? Some options for what you want your Jamboard to look like. And I personally prefer just plain blank, but I could see definitely a math teacher appreciating the dots or the grid lines, things like that. You can clear your whole frame with this button. So this is nice if you're using it for a whiteboard. You just want to click it and be like, erased. Um, not so great if you're putting a lot of time or effort into cre creating an activity to hit that button by accident. But that's what the undo is for, right? Okay, let's talk about these tools over here. So on the left, you've got your pen. And you can do um, a couple different sizes of brush. So pen, marker, highlighter, or like an actual brush. And you can change your colors. And this is where you would use um, if you were going to do this as like a whiteboard with your students or if you wanted them to like draw a picture or play Pictionary or illustrate a story that you're reading. This is the option that I would probably go with and let them choose, you know, whichever brush they want to use. The eraser to erase different pieces of it. I guess I could probably show you what it looks like. But now you have to see my beautiful computer drawing skills. Mira, hay un chico, or una chica, who knows, this is not really distinct. <laughs> and this is how you could erase my lovely person, or, ta-da, cleared. Okay, so that's what that button is for. The highlight, like the selecting tool, so just back to the regular mouse. I love the sticky note tool. So if you want to type something to your students, um, I use the sticky note tool to add instructions to the top of Jamboards I've created for them. So you say, hi match the Spanish and the English together. Okay, so there's my instruction sticky note. And then I can change the colors to something else. So if I wanted to, we're just going to do a really simple demo. Orange for Spanish, and then let's do blue for English. I just almost typed English. So then, okay. Let's talk about how you can resize this. So now the instructions are pretty big and clear. And if you wanted to, you could double click and just say, <laughs> probably don't need to say hi in your instructions. Instructions. So now this is very clearly here. And you would probably give them more pieces to match, but you can have them go like this. They can put them on top. They can put them right next to, right? You could also do an image. And you can do this from Google Image Search, you can do it from Drive, you can upload from Photos, you can just upload it to your desktop. And this way you could do kind of like a grid that shows them, I want one here, one here, one here, one here. You know what I mean? Or, yeah, okay. So that kind of gives you an option about what the sticky notes are and how that works for text. Showed you how to do the images. The laser, this is mostly for you to like, if you were using this as a virtual whiteboard, if you wanted to be like, hey kids, Here's the word hola, see how it vanishes? It's just drawing attention to the thing that you're talking about. So if you were to open one of these for your students during a live and draw attention to the instructions and then say, you know, like match this and this, that's what that's for, right? It's just to make your cursor easier to see, okay? One more relatively important piece is up here, you can see how it just says one of one you can make it multiple slides. So you could have them do like activity one with a story, different activity, third activity. I mean, you can just do a whole bunch. If you do this, you need to make sure you show your students what this thing is and how to use it to click back and forth because otherwise, guarantee you, you'll have a student do this one, turn it in and be like, done. And you'll be like, mm, there's two more pages. <laughs> okay, so just make sure that you get that. Oh. This is nice. I forgot that this button existed. So you could click this to quickly click back and forth between your frames. There. Um, again, it's a Google app, so it'll sync with Google Classroom or anything else that you know speaks happily with Google. You can use this for puzzles. So if you wanted to insert images of puzzles that you've already created, that you've cropped, that sort of thing. 
the drag and drop and manipulative option is really nice. You could do this as like chunks of story. Um, oh, oh, there's my super thrilling story. And so maybe you could say, put the story in order and they could go, hi, on Chico. You might notice that it populated them in the order that I wrote them. So if you were going to do this activity, you either want to type in your, your sentences out of order or just shuffle them before you assign it to your students. And there. <laughs> so now my story is in order. So that's a very uh, simple sequencing activity you could do with your students. I hope this gives you some ideas for how you could use Jamboard with your students this fall. Let me know if you have any questions and I'm happy to help you out.